man, they forgot to cut the heat on out there this morning. They Somebody left the air conditioner on all night, that's for sure. Man. You know, for Wednesday to be 60, I think it was 66. And then last night I looked at the temperature outside, it was like 26. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it seems like it's gotten a rhythm of Tuesday, Wednesday, super, super warm, Saturday or Sunday, snow or ice. Don't it suck, dude? It sucks. <laughs> Come on now, we're not used to getting snow anyway, and you, you're Ooh. teasing us with the summer weather and then right back. I see something cool and something new here. I see it. Out of uh, five sets that I got in, I got one left, and that's because I hit it in the box. <laughs> and uh, But that's okay. They So just, blue tools are selling? They sell, man. Wow, man. Uh, Somebody was wrong about that high up. We... Uh, well, I ain't even opened this one. They do look nice, though. They I do. Have to say that. I did notice one. So here's uh, your part number, because I know some people's gonna want to know. I did notice one uh, person posted them online, another distributor, and he had one guy comment about being Cornwell color. Out of all the pictures I've seen, and I was like, really? That's the only thing you can say about it. <laughs> but. Uh, I like the color. Yeah, I do too. They, uh, with the non-slip handle, the color's perfect. Uh, they're, they're selling quick. So yeah. my plan was to actually be able to uh, put a blue package together, like a cart. Blue tool um, deal, huh? So I was going to get some of the grinders, uh, of course the screwdrivers, uh, anything blue that I could that I could have in there, I was going to have there. but. Uh, they've all sold, so we'll, we're still gonna make it. We're definitely gonna have some cart deals um, when we get the inventory in from Expo and stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, it may not be the blue like we was gonna do. We may have some of it in there, but we're definitely gonna have some different deals and stuff like that. But I'm well, okay. Those look good. I'm gonna throw stuff down this morning. <clears throat> I'm know, okay uh, with it selling quick like that. I know those handles. For those of y'all that hadn't felt felt these handles is a tri-lobe design and it's thicker here and thinner here and it's it's a really comfortable design yeah so that was all we got to do with carpal tunnel and everything else and getting the most grip um, I know a lot of factories take that into effect also um, if if you're using something every day which most of the time technicians are um, and you probably don't even realize how much you use a screwdriver or mm -hmm. um, you're, I, you, most of the time people's like impacts are the most used, which it is, but you'd be surprised how, how often you pick up a clip tool or yeah. screwdriver or something else. But also um, talking about the design of the, the handle here, well like factories and stuff, they'll go even as far as measuring the vibrations that they use during the day. Yeah. And uh, like I know at Caterpillar when I worked there, uh, if you used any kind of air tool, you had to wear anti-vibration gloves and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, a lot of your older techs will talk about their wrist hurting or their hands hurting, and that's why. It's just the, yeah, the uh, vibration. Yeah, is like the worst yeah. like for your ears, and I feel it more in, in the bones in the back of my hand than I do my wrist after yeah. you use an air hammer for a while. See, it was always uh, right there at the thumb for me, mm -hmm. uh, like grabbing. It would hurt every once in a while, which I broke my wrist, so I I take that into effect for some of the, the pain there. But I wasn't even a tech for, I mean, eight years is not that long compared to the people mm -hmm. that's done it for 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Um, I worked with a guy that was a really good tech. He was older like that. He'd been in it all his life and he had those aches and those hurts. So to, to be able to have a screwdriver that will limit that, you're still gonna have your aches and hurts. Oh, I mean, yeah. You've been over a car all day long. It um, sucks. Yeah, so you, you're gonna have everybody that. watching this knows it sucks. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have that, but the little things like that, yeah. you know, your 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 cheaper screwdrivers, they're just gonna throw a handle on there, mm -hmm. it, it, and you may say, well, that feels good. Well, it might feel good. How how often did you use the 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 Craftsman or something when they had the ridges? And if you used it too long, your hand was hurting. Absolutely. You know, you, the design matters. I know you're talking about that. Anybody that's ever replaced a turbo on a 7.3 without one of the underhood creepers, you know, the oh yeah, the, with a ladder, 
that damn uh, <laughs> latch for the hood yeah. is going to poke you right in a belly button, and there's nothing you can do about well, it. Well, there's but the, just take it. Like, yeah. Just and it will. Sh it, if you're not cussing by the time you get through with that job, you're a saint. That's all I can say. Well, those the actuator jobs or the VVT gears on those Ford motors too. They had to do it on those too because mm -hmm. you're over it for so yep. long. Getting it, it, I mean cleaning it getting the, the timing right and getting all that done it's just it's right there uh, and i've noticed that on the newer cars uh an advantage of the overhood creeper is they're going to more and more plastic crap yeah but they're also there yeah i love toyota but their newer designs on their tundras and stuff they got all that plastic up front and, and all that bare deep. room yeah um between the radiator and the engine mm -hmm. so you're laying right on top of a plastic uh uh, grill. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, you're looking to break it. You know <laughs> yeah. say? And not only that, but th even the condensers and stuff on a lot of these are just right there in the way. And you're leaning on it, pushing on it and stuff. I know they got them supports there. Break one of those supports off and that radiator cost you. You know, it's right. just crazy. So I, I don't know that I would want to do it anymore without an overhood creeper. Well, that's like the F 150s, you know, the grills made on the hood. Yeah. And if you're under an underhead creeper, under hood creeper, not under head creeper but you will raise up and, and you it. will i'm talking about it will skin the back of your head like something ferocious well, now and even on even on those um if you've done too much on those i know it's got the perfect little step there mm -hmm. that most people put their knees on and, and i know they got the little mats but them things still kill your knees Absolutely. after about 20 30 minutes yep. It's done poke. It's done. Got the ridge <laughs> through the the little foam mat, and now you're yeah. trying to get off. And, and and if you've got any age on you at all, uh, you're trying to stand up and you're about to fall over because your knees feel like they're locked in that position. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm 30, yeah. and I already feel all that. So, uh -huh. um, especially with all the newer guys going into the the business now, go ahead and take some of the, that stuff now. I'm not telling you to wear right. anti vibration gloves that, for no, you know and by no means because a if you've ever worn them you can barely grip the tool but um that's just one thing you know get your screwdrivers get your overhood creeper get get things to make it easier faster. i know back when i showed remember when i bought the green the high via set you was running that promo and i bought the high via yep. green set from you i remember somebody said i don't like matco screwdrivers because they don't have that nut on them because a lot of times you need the extra leverage yeah but what i think people forget is the hole here and it may not be designed for no, it. No, it is. Um, but you can put a screwdriver through there. I, I'll get you to show that. Yeah, we've that actually uh, we've actually had uh, a video out telling people that's what that's for. So, of course, you get a good grip there. We've got it to where it's got a good top here to be able to put pressure down and then you just take your screwdriver and break mm -hmm. it loose. So, no, uh, a lot of people doesn't use the, it, it has a little bit of one there. It's not a whole lot. I would just go ahead, put it down, put a screwdriver through there right. um, and, and break it loose. Your smaller ones here, if you need that much leverage on that, yeah. uh, you're, you're it's just- It's a bad day. It's a bad day. Uh, you better be using a quarter inch bit driver <laughs> and, and doing yeah. it with that, uh, putting something on there, but yeah. Those handles, even like a lot of times, you know, you have to you have to use a screwdriver like this and they, they feel really good they, in your they, hand. They you feel know? good. They did a good job with those. Well, and when I first started looking at them, when I bought my first set, I was like, that's going to wear off. I yeah. ain't had a problem with that it's wearing tough. off. And now, then not only that, you get oil on there, you'd be surprised how, how much of a grip you can still get on that. Yeah. Now, uh, they look rough, but, a, you know, that's a tub of towel cleans them bad boys right up. Tub of towel definitely does a good job. Because that's what everybody said when I bought those high vis. They're like, you'll never be able to keep them clean. You'll never they want and the orange you know i bought some uh, yep. orange set too the orange ones and the high vis they wipe off so easy like it's well i um the, i used to like the um uh, i know we've talked about nipix a lot in the past but i like their handles because they're, they're usually clean so mm -hmm. easy you know the maco orange i didn't realize how good tub of towels took care of that yeah. issue until somebody come in and, and was grabbing some of my pliers with really, really dirty hands. And it, to the point that it made the tool look used. Yep. Uh, and people was like, hey, is this used? You know, what's the price? It's like, well, it's not used. And, you know, you see the it's teeth here dirty. and they're like, yeah, but look how dirty. <laughs> um, so I have the toga towels up here. So I took them out and went to clean them. And it, it just started wiping right off. And I was like, you know what? 
that they, these are worth the money in every well, I, aspect. I'll tell you how you, I know they're really good is because you've never seen a Snap-on man say that one of their products that they have can be beat by anybody else. Like, right. Period. Like, you can buy a Snap-on t-shirt and it's the best <laughs> t-shirt in the world, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking Hamilton. I love Hamilton to death. But the day Hamilton had some crap on his truck and it was dirty and he was out of his snap-on wipes, I loaned him a tub of towel to clean. It was the same thing, like you said. Yeah. Some of the tools was dirty. It was an impact. The high vis impacted that. And he's like, damn, these work better than snap-on. I was like, there, that proved it right there. <laughs> They're good. Yeah, they... Uh they're really good i i that impressed me with the tools but also i i had done a um dod delete um on a vehicle just to try it out see what it's like and uh i was filthy and i took one of those out and man it was like i went and just soaked my arm and degreaser and it just i yep. mean it just wiped right off it's awesome um it works good on <clears throat> clothes headliners like well, it cleans everything. I know there's there's water and soap at just about every shop you go to. Yeah. Whether it be a water hose, a sink. Mm -hmm. But think about the time that you could save. Because if you just got done with something, and you want to crank it up, you got to go wash your hands. Well, then you notice you left a, a air hose off. Now you cook it. You cooked it up. Well, all of a sudden your hands are dirty again. So now you're running to the sink. Now you're yeah. doing it. You're running back and forth, back and forth. Or I've seen people jump in the car just as dirty as they can be to crank it up. Now their door panel's got grease on Steering it. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Um, Gear shift. <laughs> you know. Well, I I just you know I just checked the brakes. That's all I've done. Yeah, but look at your elbow. You you're covered in brake dust now. Um, those right there, if they're on your toolbox, cart, whatever it is, roll around, just wipe it off. Your and it's a pretty good sized towel. It folds yeah, out, yeah. you know. Um, it's not just a little bitty wipe that you're going to get just, you know, a couple of fingers and have to grab another one. It's a pretty good sized towel. So. I'll tell you one thing I like about this 2S box is those full length drawers. Yeah. Now, I love my Matco box that I've got. Don't get me wrong, that 6S is a bad bitch. Like, she's <laughs> bad. But I miss having those full-length drawers. Yeah, full-length. That's length. probably the only thing I would change about that box is having the full-length drawers. So we talked to, I had a guy interested in this one yesterday, and, and I'm, I'm getting him some deals together. Um, of course, it's expo time, so I'm trying to get him expo pricing and stuff. But one of the things, he has a snap-on box, and he has two of these small, it's long drawers, but they're the smaller, shorter ones. Yep. Um, and he really liked the fact that this one had two deep ones yep. and not the two shallow. Um, and we were talking about what all could be changed and stuff like that. Um, organization in a toolbox makes it all. Um, but it's hard to find even on ours that have the two smaller drawers it's so hard to find i mean wrenches and pliers and mm -hmm. that's about it see like me and i like if this was my box and i could build it any way i wanted i'd want the this drawer here and the shallow drawer for my wrenches because yeah. i like my sockets to be on top my wrenches to be underneath it and then i'd want the rest of it to be the deeper drawers yeah but i the full length drawers it's really nice. See, I'm almost different. I don't want a shallow drawer. Because the only negative I can say about the toolbox I have is there's no place that I can put my pry bars. Yeah. Because if you've got the bigger pry bars, the, yeah, the, the, you ain't going to go the, in there. Four foot, five foot, any of those. And then my extensions for doing transmissions, those long yeah. half to half and half to three eighths extensions, one whole drawer, they're you know kind of angled <laughs> across. Yeah. But it is what it is. Kind of just messes up that whole drawer at that point. Yep. Uh, I think we got some pry bar holders and stuff that can go on the side and stuff. But um, as far as the drawers, it'd be nice to be able to throw them in a drawer, lock them up. <clears throat> are they color coded? Like, are they white? Or are they? Uh, you know, I don't know that I've ever purchased one, so I'd have to look. See, my see. OCD would not allow me to put a black yeah. pry bar holder on the side of that box. Cause I've never had anybody walk in my shop and go, Phew, that's an ugly toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I think what I'm gonna do on mine, I'm gonna try to get me a Michelob Ultra sticker in the center of those tall lockers, make it look like a giant Michelob Ultra bottle. <laughs> yeah. You might not dread opening them as bad. 
So yeah, of, um, we've got the pry bar, lock and pry bar rack. Um, then it's got, of course, some of the different ones, and of course it shows the colors here. So how do they mount on there? Well, I'll look into that and see. Because uh, you got pale horse white, and that's what I got. Most of the time, they're going to mount with the holes that's already uh, there for like handles and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll look into it. Like I said, I've never ordered that, and I'm never going to sit up here and say I know everything about all that. But um, well, I'll yeah. look into it and see because they have a couple different options there. You know, they they have the uh, the style here. It's like a cabinet, and then yeah. they have like the actual long pry bar deal here, uh, which of course is open at the bottom so that it sticks out but it's still got them locked in or right. you can't can't nobody just walk in and take it um but that is an option there so i'll i'll probably be while i'm at the expo and i can sit there and talk to them the the people at the plant and stuff uh and i've seen people at the plant comment on some of the videos and stuff so if they want to throw the throw the idea out there got to drill no holes in that thing that's yeah, because nobody I'm really wants. Go. Yeah, nobody really wants to drill no holes in. Like I don't even put stickers on my. It looks like I have stickers on my box, but they're stuck on magnets. Yeah. But we'll we'll definitely figure it out. But we'll uh, I'll ask them. But yeah, that's that's one good thing about the book. It shows us we. But. Cool. I, I know a lot of their stuff. I want to say the holes where the handle goes, but either way. All right. So we got screwdrivers. I also got this out. This was new for us. Um, it's actually a trailer connector that hooks up to our scanners. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to do all these different tests here. Now, I've never worked on a truck, so I don't know uh, really what all it does. But it says that it lets you do the ABF, uh, ABS lamp test, clear DTCs, um, ABS modular test. All that good stuff. I know that a few shops that I go into uh, that have a bunch of trailers, yeah, um, they're always complaining about the the truck driver saying the ABS lights ABS on and they don't know why. Always on, and then and, you got to figure out which wheel it is. Yeah. and is it the sensor? Is it the exciter ring? Is it just not set right? Is it dirty? Is it a connector? Right. Or is it the wire? <laughs> so I was lost. <laughs> So yeah, it lets you do all those tests. Of course, you do have to have our scanner for it. Um, but I will argue, if you're only doing one or two trailers, I can see just mm -hmm. figuring it out. And you probably get good enough to where you pretty much know what it is right off the bat. Well, you got but, a 25% of a 25% of a 25% chance of getting it right. Yeah. but First like, guess. <laughs> uh, one of the places that I go to, they have over 100 trailers. Oh yeah, that so pay for itself quickly. It would benefit them. And, and there is standalone machines out there that'll mm -hmm. do it, um, but they're expensive as well. Yeah. And the good thing about our new scanner, the Max 4, they can purchase the heavy duty scanner, but they'll also, it, it they can get it with the car line already in it, not really costing anything extra, everything's there. Um, It'd be crazy for a shop that works on trailers because you know they've got a service truck. Well, that's what I said. You know say. they've got a parks truck. You know, so. it, in a lot of the in a lot of the scanners, it's either or, yeah. and then when you can add it to it, it's a whole 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 lot more. Ours is very well priced to be able to do both. And the old scanner is really nice too. Like it's not no cheap old looking. It's a it's a really, it's a really nice, nice scanner. scanner. It, it's laid out right. You can get the scanner, get this attachment, and it's going to save you money. But also, it's going to, you're going to have your service truck that you're going to work on. Any shop one that's got a mechanic, technician, whatever you call yourself, you're going to work on the office mm -hmm. people's cars. You're going to work on the owner's cars. Yep. You're going to work on the cousins, the daughters, the sons. You're going to work on cars. A buddy's buddy. So if, yeah. if, if you can get the shop to spend the money, get the scanner, it's going to benefit you in mm -hmm. so many different ways. Talking about scan tools, I like the Bluetooth dongle thing. Yeah. It's a great idea. The only negative I have with it, when you're doing a regen like on a Cummins or, you know, because a Cummins is going to take two hours, yeah. you know, on a, on a big truck Cummins. It's a long time, even on a, a, a power stroke in some of them. 
the only thing I don't like about it is when you're doing that regen, if, because it's not hooked to the vehicle, you gotta make sure you got battery or have a cord close where you can plug it in, that kind of thing. I wish they would come up with a way that you could have either or. Yeah. So like if you know you're doing a long regen on a truck, you can plug the cord in and it'll keep the tablet charged. Yeah. Because we actually had DLC. one go to sleep one time and it was almost done regening and guess what? It started all over. Start all over. Well, and, it and sucked. I can. But now that was a a Bosch. It was the Bosch skin tool. Yeah. Well, and um, you're not going to be doing a whole lot of this with the the micro scanner, but uh, I know on some of your computers and stuff, if you start a test and it dies in the middle of it, it can actually wipe the ECM, ECM out. Yeah. Um, we were using a laptop. Uh, we had some recalls to do on some of the Toyotas and. They would let you buy the software for a regular laptop, and we had a laptop, and it it had some kind of problem with it. I can't remember if it would. I can't remember what it was. Anyways, the laptop would actually burn the ECM up, so they actually oh, put out yeah. a TSB to stop using the laptop version. You had to use the text stream. Mm -hmm. um, I. I that would get expensive really fast, right there. Really fast, really quick, and it, and. <laughs> So it was enough. I think the tech streams at the time were five or six thousand dollars a piece. Um, we had we had it happen enough to where out of eight techs, five being master tech, they bought every master tech a tech stream for themselves. So if a dealership's re ready to spend over twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you know that it was happening enough. And I'm sure they can. So hopefully somebody at Matco will listen and be like, hey. We could put a port on here where we could plug a USB-C in the side of this dongle. Well, I guarantee you if there's a way, somebody will tell us. But. Plug it into the scan tool just so it'll keep the battery charged. Yeah. Cause, man, you take, if you got, especially a truck shop, every time you do a repair on an emissions truck, almost every repair, unless it's brakes and shit like that, I'm talking about like a real repair, yeah. you're going to have to clear codes and force a regen. Yeah. And, you know, diesels hardly ever tire up unless it ain't emissions related, you know? Well, I don't know if, <clears throat> I don't know if we talked about it on the video or not, but one of the weeks that Leslie was running the truck um, by herself when I was working on the house, my phone had died and she was running the route. But anyways, my mom come over and said, hey, you need to go to, it was actually the bank right over here across the mm -hmm. road um, and, and get Leslie the truck won't won't go up a hill so i'm like what, what in the world's what's wrong with it you know so um i go there well it's derated and the reason that it's derated is because it's saying that it hasn't done a regen the emissions lights on yeah and so i try every way in the world to force a regen um with, with the, the button with the buttons yeah, it and it's, it's not doing anything clear the codes force a regen and I've never claimed to be a diesel tech at all, so I know nothing. Okay, mm -hmm. we limp it. Um, this y'all were gone somewhere. I can't remember where. That's when we was in Vegas at SEMA. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we limped it over here. It took forever because I had to get across the highway, and it had I could back up faster yeah. than I could go forward, and I, I I had all the gas I wanted in reverse, <laughs> none going forward. <laughs> but uh, we finally get it over here. We we were going to to get something to eat, but also I didn't have my demo. It was loaned out. Mm -hmm. So we met Joe, Joe let me have his demo. We bring it back and I hook it in. I'm telling it to do a regen. Lo and behold, I mess with it long enough that now the battery's dead on the scanner. So I have to go charge the scanner because there's nobody, you know, I'm if, if you'd have been here, we'd have had an extension cord to yeah. it, it would have been fine. It's colder. So if you I'm if freezing. make a cord, yeah. you wouldn't have a problem. Uh, I'm freezing. It's not doing a regen. It's telling me that it can't because of the codes in it. You look the codes up online, it says that those are dealer codes that have to be cleared. Um, basically that it hadn't regened in so long that uh, it now it's pretty much the codes got to be cleared to regen. But all in all, we was able to figure out it was a fuse. But my thing is, by the time that I messed around, looked at the wiring diagrams, it was setting a heater code, mm -hmm. def heater code. Found out there was a there's a def header problem, and I called the dealership. It's going to be five hundred dollars to get my truck towed up there, plus whatever labor it is. 
the def head is back ordered, so they, you know, and all of this, there's, well, the toe's not covered under warranty, the diagnosis, if it ain't the, the def header, uh, it's, it's not covered, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it's like, holy crap. We all go back to if the scanner could stay charged long enough, um, then I could mess around with these wiring diagrams. And we, it, it was a fuse. I mean, it, it literally, once I popped the fuse cap up there and found that it had a, the def head heater fuse was blowed, we put it in, it did a regen, but that regen took an hour. I don't know if that's normal or what, but it took forever. Yeah. Um, and well, I was, you can thank California for all your regen problems. Yeah. Well, you know, they uh, they allowed a temporary um, delete while these parts were back ordered. Back ordered, yeah. And it's like, uh, well, we just need to stay with that delete. What they should do is the rest of the world should just tell California, you keep your emissions trips there. And then if you need shit brought in, we'll meet you at the border and y'all can cross dock it into your non-emissions truck and haul them back into California. That's the simplest thing to do. I think we're all for a more healthy environment, but if you've ever seen where they manufacture batteries and where they have to dig to do it, it there is a lot. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, I was Definitely. talking to somebody where they have a um, bulldozer that is completely hybrid. Well, the battery went out. It was under warranty after like, uh, I think it was 15 or 16 hours. Anyways, the battery went out. No time. It was like a $38,000 battery that he had to get replaced under warranty. But not only that, there's not a whole lot of people that know how to work on hybrids. I'm going to close the video with this final saying. When Biden is riding in his limo that's armored and it has emissions on it, I won't fuss him. But you know they're not going to be going through a bad part of the neighborhood and be like, oh shit, we're derated. We got to pull over and regen. So that's all I'm going to say about it. Like, what's yeah. good for the goose is good for the gander. So, oh well. All right, guys. So that's the video today. Thank you all for watching and hanging out with us. Like always, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes in the description. If you're not subscribed, click that button. Y'all have a great weekend. See ya.